Welcome to Foundations TV. Today we have with us the Vice President of Data Services from the company that we are all familiar with, the Weather Channel, the Weather Company. You have got different names. Ultimately their goal and mission is to provide weather to all of us no matter where we are, either on our cell phones, on the TV channels, in cars or on radio stations. So we have with us in a studio Mr. Uh, Satish and he is the uh, uh, Vice President of Data Services at the Weather Channel. So Satish, yes. welcome to the studio. Thank you, Neeraj. So, I understand you got hired at the Weather Company to build big data strategy. Yes. What does that really mean for yes, day-to-day sure. basis? So, for the Weather Company, uh, is a, itself is a big data company. Uh -huh. When you talk about big data, you are talking about larger amounts of data, uh -huh. big volume. Uh -huh. So we ingest terabytes of data every day, okay. variety. Uh -huh. We get data in variety of formats, from binary to text format, okay. various formats, okay. and uh, also velocity. We get this data of some of our personal weather stations every second. So we got uh, all the uh, constraints to be a really big data company. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so my job there is to build a next generation data service platform mm -hmm. which I have built it okay. and now that platform is capable of serving billions of requests uh, with a very low latency less than 15 milliseconds. Great. So on a daily basis if I, if I understand it properly you get data from all the latitude and longitudes every few minutes? Yeah, every, yes. Okay. Uh, so we, we get the data from various sources. Uh, from satellites, from the government agencies, okay. from the uh, from our uh, weather stations, okay. from various places, we, we get we keep on getting the data. Okay. So then we build this next generation data service platform. It takes all this data and process it, mm -hmm. and also we use a lot of memory based technologies okay. and big data technologies okay. to predict, forecast, and serve with very low latency. Okay. So let me put things into context you get a feed of data coming into you. Correct. Almost on a regular basis. Correct. You store the data into your database somewhere. Correct. Then you load the data into memory. Correct. Then you do forecasting of the data. Correct. And then you return the data back to the user. Correct. All within 15 to 20 milliseconds. Yeah, so the round time request when you're asking for a particular latitude and longitude and mm -hmm. for a given language, uh -huh. when, you, uh, when you submit a request the, at, at our origin, yep. the round trip of from our within our infrastructure is 15 less than 15 milliseconds. Great. So how do you do that massive amount of crunching yes. so fast and 24 by 7? Yes, and also this one important thing is we don't do forecasting right now on a batch mode. Uh -huh. We do forecast on demand. So if you are asking for a forecast for a given latitude and longitude, we do it in real time and we predict uh, the forecast. And, and, and give it back to you. So, as I said, we built everything in a very high efficient infrastructure plus the coding and the languages, what we have used, the way we have built it. Okay. It's very high performing and very scalable and highly available infrastructure. Okay, so let's take the same example and personalize that to a user. Correct. Imagine I have my cell phone with me Correct. and I am driving in my car going from point A to point B, Correct. which is 50 mile uh, distance I'm Correct. covering. Correct. So my understanding from what you explained to me before the interview started, that my cell phone is going to ping Correct. the data center Correct. every few minutes. Uh, it all depending upon your operating system. Okay. Suppose it's a part of the operating system. So uh, uh, there are uh, uh, certain apps, they're part of the operating system. Okay. If they're part of the operating system, without you knowing, your cell phone is pinging us. Excellent. So basically, as I'm driving from point A to point B, the cell phone is pinging the weather channel's yeah, yeah. databases. C correct. Getting the response back every 15 milliseconds. Correct. 
and that is for every lat and long as I traverse the distance from point A to point B. Point A to point B and also uh, it depending upon how uh, you have set it up uh -huh. and how, what type of operating system you are using. Yep. But uh, and also yes in the you are going from point A to point B if you are asking for it and if it is within certain range yep. then we will be serving the data from the cache. If okay. you ca causes certain uh, threshold of the distance then it is going to uh, hit us. So, there is a special applicability uh -huh. in the request. So, suppose if it is 5 kilometer within uh -huh. the 5 kilometer range. Uh -huh. So, in that case uh, the request will be serving from uh, local cache. I see, I see. So, tell us what is the scale we are talking of on a daily basis. How many requests do you get that you serve yeah. within this 15 so, milliseconds time? So, is right now we are serving more than 5 billion requests per day. Per day. That 5 means, billion requests. That means how many per second? Uh, it would be, I would say it is uh, roughly around 60,000 requests per second. That is worldwide or US only? It is worldwide. Worldwide. It is a, a global wow. thing, 60,000 requests and also uh, it is it's pretty fast. And you build this entire thing? Yes. So, tell uh, me, me and my team, yeah. uh, we so build this tell entire. me more about what kind of technologies you use to build this massive sure. warehouse? Sure. So, we have built everything in Java. Mm -hmm. And in certain, uh, for example, for maps and image processing, we use certain C and C++ libraries. Okay. And we use RabbitMQ, mm -hmm. Cassandra, mm -hmm. Redis, mm -hmm. React, Varnish, uh -huh. Akamai. And we heavily we leverage the AWS technology. Okay. So, and also we built our platform on a grid computing. Okay. So that, uh, so we are, uh, we want to be cloud neutral. Okay. Uh, so, cloud provide, provider yep. neutral. Yep. Yeah. So, when you were building these technologies, what kind of skills did you, that you build the team from scratch? Yes, yes. So, how do you go about hiring people who have got this kind of a big data background? Sure, Do sure. you have, look for some specialized skills? Do you have some data scientists? Yeah. Some economists, some Correct. modelers with you? Like, okay. Tell us more about so that. So, we have a team of uh, uh, weather scientists uh -huh. because we need a SME. Yep. So, the people with a lot of weather science background uh -huh. as SMEs. And we have a very experienced, I hired a very experienced Java developers okay. with the back-end computing okay. and who, who got the experience in building the engines, data processing engines. I see. So, in how much time did you take to acquire the team, acquire the technologies, so do we, the we, contract, we, and build the whole thing? So, we have done it within one and a half year. 18 months? 18 months. Is this the biggest data? Um, it is one of the world's largest, I mean I can proudly say it is one of the world's largest data service platform right now. Amazing. Uh, because the sheer scale yeah. of it is so magnificent. Yeah, and it is everything is auto scalable. Uh -huh. So, we do not uh, uh, worry about the traffic as the traffic increase. Because in our uh, business, traffic is unexpected. Depending upon the weather conditions, yep. you get more traffic. And we have a minimal configuration as the traffic increases, we auto scale and, and uh, auto down scale. Mm -hmm. So, everything is automatic. I see. So, with this level of data, big data application that you have built, what recommendations would you give to other enterprises out there who are in different phases of maturity of building? modeling, analytics and yeah. big data applications. Yeah. What are the lessons so, you have learned so far? So, one thing is uh, time to market. Mm -hmm. I think that is very, very important. Whatever you do, time to market is very, very important. So, you use the technologies which will enable you that. Uh, so, uh, if any new data product or anything if you want to introduce, use the technologies like NoSQL databases which are, which are very, very good and use that and, and leverage the cloud based computing that is going to help to market faster because you not worry about, uh, about uh, quite a lot of things. And also uh, use uh, systems and tools appropriately uh, depending upon the use case and on the top of that you need to have the best team, very motivated team and who, who, uh, who should be proud of whatever they are doing. Right. So, before we uh, finish this interview, I have got few more things that are sure. very intriguing for me. You mentioned as a part of uh, our discussion mm. that you do not believe in backups. Yes, yes. So, tell me more about that. Yeah. So, in these days, uh, backups and restores, if it is a 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte, you may know you always can do it. If it is 100 terabytes, how we are going to, uh, how we are going to backup, how we are going to uh, recover, that is very, very, very uh, time consuming and that data once you recover that may not be useful because the, the whole uh, uh, data might have changed that may not be useful. So, what we have used is we have uh, used the replicas. 
So, in, if you take any NoSQL uh, database environment or any clustered environments, you have the concept of replicas. If you keep replicas, so if you lose one replica, still you have other replica. So, these replicas are also uh, uh, in real time, you know, it is not like a, a backup. So, it is being used for all the reads and everything. I see, I see. And also, the replicas do not put it in uh, one data center and distribute these replicas across the globe or across the data center. So, that any, at any given point of time, if one data center or one region goes bad, you have other regions uh, to recover. I see, I see. And you also mentioned a uh, very interesting thing that you are using grid, grid computing and with no backups and no restores. Uh, right, right, okay. right. Right. So, when you are using so many wide variety of technologies right. and when you are hiring people, right. there is a challenge because anybody who is coming on board needs to know so many different technologies. Right, right, right. How do you overcome the challenge from a day to day basis? Yeah, yeah, I think that is uh, uh, one thing, but, uh, but the commonality is there are, uh, the, uh, there are certain commonalities. If you get a very good Java developers and a very good system administrators, they, they will be in a position to learn, learn the new technology, but, but at the same time you should minimize, right. do not put so many technologies, it then becomes a support issue, but uh, do not use just one thing for everything, that is also bad. So, uh -huh. you need to you need to optimize uh -huh. and choose appropriate technologies to do uh, appropriate job. I remember you taking one example, if you have a knife, do not use a knife for cutting vegetables and cutting grasses. Cutting gra yes, yes. Right tool for the right job, uh, right job. that optimizes different things for Correct. the yes, enterprises. Sir. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I believe that everybody uh, listening to this interview would have learned so many things about big data and how uh, the weather company and Satish and his team have built the, one of the world's largest big data projects. And we are very proud of you what you have done so far. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.